I'm Saturday haul on for you guys today and I'm going to go ahead and start off with a order that I placed off of the Sephora website. I was really intrigued by the new Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Liquid Concealer. So I went ahead and I picked up the shade Yogurt Drops <laughs> one and a half B. So this is the box packaging right there and there's 0.3 fluid ounces of product in here and it is made in Italy. And then here is the packaging for the concealer. It's kind of a frosted acrylic and it's got a little bit different kind of doe foot applicator than some. It's one of the larger kind. Um, but this is the concealer that I have underneath my eyes today and it's a really thin consistency and it blends out super nice and it has a medium buildable coverage. And I don't find that it's so heavy that you can see a separation with a lighter foundation um, and just cause it blends out so nice. Um, so I really have been enjoying this concealer. Um, the first couple times that I had used it, um, it looked a little dry towards the end of the day on my skin and I switched up my eye creams um, to one that's really, really hydrating and I kind of hadn't used that one during the day because it does tend to make my concealer uh, settle into my little um, under eye kind of lines right there. It's the Neo Cutis eye cream that I've talked about a couple times, um, but using that eye cream with this concealer, it does tend to look uh, not as dry on me towards the end of the day. Granted, I have really dry under eyes, so that is something to take into consideration. If you've got like normal or even oily, I think that, that you probably won't have that issue. And I did get a little bit of settling kind of on my little little under eye roll there with the Neo Cutis eye cream. When I use the Saturday Skin eye cream, I don't get any creasing at all with this. So a lot of times, again, that Neo Cutis eye cream will make um, concealers go into those little under eye wrinkles that I have. Again, I do have it underneath my eyes today and I use the um, pressed flower nose powder that I just adore to set it and it just looks really, really pretty. And I've had this makeup on for about three hours so that's kind of what you're looking at for underneath my eyes. And it does have, I wouldn't say it's luminous at all. There's no sparkle or no shine or any type of aspect like that. It is, I would say a more matte concealer but it's not the mattest out there. And it's again, it's really kind of fluid and thin and it covers well. It does feel comfortable underneath the eyes as well um, but when I use like I said my normal eye cream for during the day um, it does tend to look dry on my really dry under eyes so we'll just kind of blend it out right there and you can see a little bit goes quite a ways and so I just did a swipe and a swipe and I blended it out for all the way underneath my eyes I'm, I'm not 100% sure even with that rich eye cream that I could get away with this in the winter time but um, again with the Neo Cutis right now in the summertime it's been working out. So that is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer in Yogurt Drops right there. And then RMS Beauty came out with some new blushes. They're the Redimension Hydra Powder Blushes. And I could tell that they were baked gelée. So I had to get one. When I see lines come out with like baked gelée blushes, I wanna just like get every single blush in the range, which I have done that in the past. <laughs> <laughs> but I was good this time. I just got one and then one of the another baked jelly blush I'm going to show you in a minute, but this is the shade uh, French Rosé and you guys have heard me talk about the baked jelly formula a lot. It's one of my favorite formulas on the skin. It just looks really seamless and pretty. Um, this is a really pretty shade, uh, but it does have a little bit of extra sparkle to it that can emphasize a little bit of texture. So that is something to keep in mind about these ones. That's just what I found with this particular one. So there's 0.25 ounces of product in this guy and it is naturally made in Italy as are most big jelly products. <laughs> so this is the uh, box packaging right here. And then here is the actual packaging. It is a hard plastic. And then there's a dent in here because this actually pops out, which makes me think that they're going to be a refillable um, compact. It's not one that's in a pan. I always prefer when there's like a refillable that it's in a pan that you magnetize in the compact as opposed to like this one here. I'll show you, I'll pop it out. Um, it's encased in a plastic. So I like the metal pans just because you can pop them in a magnetic like empty palette for travel purposes and stuff like that. But this one comes um, in the plastic like that. So I'll just pop it back in here. And this is just a really pretty baby pink shade. It does have like a decent amount of shine to it. So again, the shade that I got is French Rosé.
kind of blend it out a little bit, but you can really see the shine in there. And something about the shine on this particular one, if I if I go kind of heavy without buffing it out a decent amount, it does emphasize a little bit of texture. Granted, I don't have a ton of texture, but I do have a scar on my cheek right there, and it just made it a little bit more prominent. It's not a scar that I really care about or anything, and it's not a deal breaker for me, but I just wanted to um, make note of that. And you can kind of see right there that shine that this particular blush gives but it is a really pretty shade. So that is the RMS French Rosé Redimension Hydra Powder Blush. And then I'll kind of segue into the next extra dimension blush that I got, which is the new reformulated line by House Labs by Lady Gaga, which recently launched at Sephora. And I believe they have a revamp on their website, if I'm not mistaken. But this is also a baked jelly formulation. And this is also, of course, made in Italy. <laughs> so this guy here has got 0.3 ounces of product. And then you can kind of see that the cardboard looks like that recycled kind of cardboard. So the shade that I got is a Fire Opal. And the first time that I seen a shade of blush like this, it was from Flower Nose. And since then, there was one other company, like I can't think of it off, off the top of my head, that had a shade similar to this. But it looks, it looks like an orange, but it shifts like this pink Fire Opal. <laughs> color on the cheeks that's really stunning so the packaging on this is really pretty too it is an opal kind of packaging as well glossy and then again you've got your extra dimension right there this one is also quite shiny same kind of deal as the rms it can emphasize a little bit of texture but it's got that high shine to it um there are some little sparkles in there um, but they're not they're very very fine i think that if anything they're like a uh, probably a larger mica um, so as you can see it looks orange in the pan and then you'll see here when I buff it out that it's got this beautiful pink shift to it so it's it's a really really stunning color and I felt the same way about the one from the flower nose uh, unicorn collection so that is a fire opal from the relaunched uh, House Labs. They, they call it the Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighter. I also picked up one of the bronzers from House Labs by Lady Gaga. It's the Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer. Uh, 12 grams, 0.42 ounces of product in this guy, and it is also made in Italy. I believe I got the lightest shade available. Yeah, light level one is what it's called. Um, so I think this, again, is the lightest one that's available. And the packaging on this one comes in like a bronzy and then this top is a rubber feel to it and it hasn't been to be honest as sticky as I thought it would like some rubbers can just really grab onto product and I've used this bronzer for I think probably a week straight I've worn the H all the way off the top of it it's a really pretty shade it's actually the um, bronzer that I have all over my face today and it's a very interesting formulation so it is a powder bronzer but there's a creaminess factor to this formulation that doesn't make it exceptionally dusty and it blends out on the skin really pretty so i really have been enjoying this there was an h in there i think you can kind of see it just a little bit in there but it's a really pretty formula again just buttery smooth and you can see it doesn't kick up a lot in the pan either but it is a powder formulation and i'm going to go ahead and swatch um this one here next to the Gucci bronzer too, just so you can see the tones. The Gucci's more pinky peach um, than this one. This one's kind of like a, a really true neutral. It doesn't pull too orange or olive or anything on me. It's just a really great color. And again, the formulation's nice as well. Blends out, nice pigmentation, just a super easy to use product. And it's not like a dry, dusty powder either. It's again, it's pretty creamy. So I really like this. This is the Power Sculpt. Velvet Bronzer from House Labs in light level one right there. Again, that's what the packaging looks like. And then I'll go ahead and swatch it next to the Gucci bronzer so you can just see the tones together. This is, as you can see, <laughs> one of my favorite bronzers. It's just got a little bit more peachiness to it and it's a little bit more powdery than the House Labs one. And then lastly from House Labs by Lady Gaga, I got one of their Optic Intensity Eco Liners. So there's a total of 0.04 ounces of product in this guy. 
and this pencil is made in France. It says house tech powered with vitamin E and argan oil, plastic free cellulose barrel. So again, it's along the lines of, you know, eco-friendly. So this is the packaging right here. I got the teal shade, and this is actually the liner that I have got on my waterline today. And I've really been enjoying this product. It's not like bulletproof. I do get a little bit of inner corner transfer, maybe like seven or eight hours into the day, but it still goes on really nice and maintains a nice pigmentation to it. I've got really watery allergy prone eyes, so it's hard to keep a liner on the waterline in general, but this one here did a pretty good job. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get the blue one as well. So anyway, let's swatch it for you. So this is what the pencil looks like. It is a sharpened style pencil, and then you do have a brush um, on the other end, it's just a little tiny kind of smudger guy. Like actually super functional little smudger liner brush. It's a super soft uh, synthetic, but you can see just how thin it is. Very functional for smudging out liner there. And then let me swatch this right here so you can kind of see how it glides on nice pigmentation to it. So I'm able to just grab this guy and go back and forth on the waterline on each side and then I go back to the other one to intensify it just a little bit and that's it. And it grabs onto the waterline really well. So again, I've been enjoying the formulation of this guy and I really like the color too. So um, did I tell you the color? <laughs> it's a uh, teal matte is the shade. So I've had this on the lower waterline for again about three hours now and I never really grabbed it since I've gotten it to touch up the waterline. Um, it's faded just a little bit on the outer corner so I thought as I'm doing this here <laughs> that I would go ahead and try to uh, kind of touch up the outer corner and it kind of set down and so I had to go over it a little bit because it was it was kind of lifting itself off, off the waterline, which um, a lot of long wearing pencils do that because it dries down so like hard to stay. So when you go back over it, it'll lift up the product that you already put down. So it does that a little bit, but it's not the worst that I've used that does something like that. And granted, it only had a little bit of fading on the outside anyways, but I just thought I would go ahead and mention that. And then this has been on here for, I don't know, what, a minute or something, just to show you guys. If I really push hard, I can get it to drag. Um, but I mean, I'm pushing really hard to get it to do that. So just kind of wanted to show you guys that. And while I still got those bronzer swatches on, I figured I'd swatch this bronzer next to those ones so you can kind of see them together. But I picked up one of the new Fenty Beauty Toasted Swirl Bronze Shimmer Powders. There's a total of 0.42 ounces of product or 12 grams in this guy. And it is... Uh, made in Italy. So this is the box packaging. Kind of really pretty spiced up Fenty packaging. I'm kind of living for it. And then here is the actual packaging. It's like a light lavender. And here I kind of, it's got a marbled effect to it. And I thought that I had gotten like eyeliner on it. It's a hard shiny plastic so it would, you would think it just wiped right off. But that's just a, <laughs> that's just a coloring of the marble of the packaging. Here I was really trying to like, did I stain this? <laughs> Anyway, here is the packaging right here. So this formulation is, um, it's very, very thin. It's got a slight puttiness to it, and you can tell there are quite a few um, silicones in there and a few like oil derivatives in there, but it's, again, it's very, very thin. I don't think I mentioned the shade that I got. I got Chocolate Swiller, which I believe is the lightest of the two shades. And then you can see it's got this marbling in it. So this is a really shiny bronze type powder that'll be a good one for probably all over the body. But I did use it on the face as a bronzer and it looked super pretty buffed out as like a glowy bronzer. And it's very golden for what I typically like in a bronzer, but it still looked really pretty. And it's such a thin formulation. I'm gonna try to get you to see. It's got the slightest uh, puttiness to it. So if, if I push on it, like that you can see that it dents and I had used it with um, a Wayne Goss number one uh, brush which is kind of a duo fiber and it picked it up great sometimes um, those spongier type of products are hard to, to pick up this one picked up really good on a brush so there's a mirror in there too let me go ahead and give you guys a swatch of that guys so you can see it's really like a golden bronze with a high shine to it and I just want to swatch it next to those other bronzers that I had up. So that's the House Labs, the Gucci 01, and then the Fenty uh, ch Chocolate Swiller.
And then I picked up a couple new products from Pat McGrath Labs. She came out with this mini eyeshadow palette. I think it would have been nice had there been a couple different color variations, but maybe this is just an introduction and there are more coming because I think it's quite cute and functional and travel friendly. <laughs> so anyway, it's the mini eyeshadow palette in Midnight Voyage. There's a total of three grams of product or 0.1 ounces is the net weight. So across six shades, that's about 0.017 ounces per shade. So not a ton of product that you're getting in the palette itself, but it's quite small and it's actually a decent amount of product for as tiny as it is with six shades. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let me show you the palette here or let me tell you where it's made first. This one is made in Italy. It comes in her little um, plastic packaging. I appreciate that there aren't any sequins in that one. And then here is the actual palette. It is a hard plastic packaging. And I grabbed a Charlotte Tilbury quad because I feel like most people are quite familiar with those for a size comparison. So you can see it is quite small. It's just a little bit smaller than a Charlotte Tilbury quad. Um, just so you can kind of get an idea through the lens of the size reference there. And it's got this little bit of kind of filigree detail on there. And then the shades on the back. And some of the shades kind of sound familiar like Skin Show Divine Glow and uh, Sunset Bronze, but I'm not 100% sure if those are new or not. Um, granted, these are very safe Pat McGrath shades that we have seen um, if they're not exact dupes, similar shades across her all of her palettes. So there's nothing super new in here. And I can say when I've used this palette, um, the formulation and the quality of the shadows in here is really nice. Like the look came out super pretty and it was kind of on par for me with what I expect out of Pat McGrath shadows. There aren't any special shades in here. They're just standard Pat McGrath matte and shimmer formulation, but they're nice quality again. Um, so let me go ahead and give you guys some swatches. There are two mattes, which are those two shades right there. And because there's this light highlight shade, this is an easy standalone for me as well. And then these two. I think you can even see pretty good in the swatches that they're, you know, on par with uh, Pat McGrath's formula that are in her larger palettes, which I'm happy about. I'm glad that they don't feel skimped on in terms of the formulation for this kind of smaller palette. So that guy there is the Pat McGrath mini eyeshadow palette in Midnight Voyage right there. She also came out with four new highlighters in her Skin Fetish Divine Glow formulation. So this has got 0.16 ounces of product and it is made in Italy. The box packaging on this is so pretty. I would love if they started to incorporate this, you know, pretty imagery from the box packaging onto the actual packaging. For one, you'd be able to tell kind of your products a little bit better from one another, um, but also it's just so pretty. <laughs> so this is the standard kind of Pat McGrath packaging with the button on it. And the shade that I got is Lunar Allure. So again, 0.16 ounces of product in here. So this is more along the lines of a traditional powder highlighter, but it does have some silicones in it that makes it feel kind of glaze-like. So I did pick up um, the Golden Nectar one, and I can't remember which collection this one came out with. So I did have one in this range and I wasn't crazy about the formula because I had a hard time getting it to stick to my drier skin type. Now since then <laughs> with the uh, purchase of the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, stick highlighter. I've got the shade Pink Diamond. This goes over an already set face super well without disturbing the product underneath it and it makes an amazing base for really pretty highlighters like these Pat McGrath ones that don't stick to my dry skin. So I've actually got the Anastasia Beverly Hills highlighter stick as a base on the top of my cheeks. Um, I didn't use it as a base for the other highlight points but I used it for a base on the top of my cheeks because that's the drier portion of my face and then I went over it with the Lunar Allure shade and it's just very blinding, very beautiful. So <laughs> if you have like more of a normal oily skin, I'm sure you could just use these pat highlighters by themselves and it would just be like super blinding, but I've got a drier skin type. So I kind of got to get creative, but I really enjoyed how this ABH stick highlighter acts as a base for several highlighters in my collection that are really beautiful. Like when you swatch them, but when I apply them, it's harder for them to stick to my dry skin type. <laughs> anyway, so let's go ahead and give you guys a swatch of Lunar Allure. 
here. So that's it by itself. Well, that's the palette still if you want to see. Again, it's more along the lines of a traditional kind of powder highlighter. And then you know what? Let me go ahead and kind of swatch the ABH so you can see that right here. So that's the ABH, and then I'm going to go ahead and stack the um, Lunar Allure over the top of it. So Lunar Allure, make sure I know what I'm doing, and then there it is over the ABH. So that is just so, so pretty to me. Um, yeah, so the combination of the two is what makes me really like this particular highlighter formulation from uh, Pat McGrath. Otherwise, I was having kind of issues with it when I tried to use it with Golden Nectar, which I'll just swatch this one for kicks in case you have this one and kind of want to see a shade comparison between them. And this one, as you can see, is a bit too dark for me as well. So maybe I'll try to mix those and I can get some use out of this. <laughs> but in any event, by itself, I'm not crazy about it. Over the Anastasia Beverly Hills highlighter, I love it. And then I also picked up two of her new Divine Blush Duos. And these have got 0.34 ounces of product in them and these are also made in Italy. Um, same thing, absolute stunning uh, box packaging. This is the same style of packaging as the highlighters. It's the black glossy plastic um, with the button on there, which sometimes they can be a little bit finicky to uh, get open because the you have to push on the button really hard. Um, I used to, I really liked her packaging without the button, like when it was just magnetized. But anyway, um, they do have a nice weight to them though. So let's go ahead and start out with the shade that is on my cheeks and it is Cosmic Coral. And this is one of the prettiest blushes going into summer. It's a, it's a bronzy, it's a bronzy kind of corally pink and it's just stunning. So I'm super glad that I picked this guy up. So you got two shades there. The bronzy half has got this reddened undertone to it and then you've got the pink and swirled together, which is how I've been using it. Oh, it's so, so pretty. This like sun kissed or just out of the sun kind of flush on the cheeks is what I get out of it. So I mixed them together. So it's kind of this shade right here. And there are the two shades if you wanted to kind of um, divide the two and use, you know, one or the other. Those, those are what they look like right there. And I would say that on the skin, it's got a satin finish, no visible sparkles, but it's not super flat matte on me either. So I think satin is probably safe, but it's just an absolutely uh, stunning color right there. So that is the shade um, Cosmic Coral right there. And then I had to have the Venusian Sunrise shade because of this beautiful lilac pink color. This is another shade that is just stunning. And when I've worn this, I've just mixed the two shades together and it's the prettiest pink blush. You can also, you know, separate them with a smaller brush and get more lilac or more pink if you would like, but I've been just using them together. And I just adore the two shades of the blushes that I picked up. I may, maybe I'll just do that because if you buy on the Pat McGrath website, you can like build a bundle and so that's how I got the highlighter and the two blushes um, so maybe I'll get that next highlighter maybe and two more blushes because I really like these and the other shades look really pretty too <laughs> but I do feel like I got the two best shades right out the gate so anyway let's give you some uh, swatches of this guy again this is the shade Venusian Sunrise just very pretty. So there are the three shades that you can get out of the Venusian Sunrise. And again, I feel like that's a satin formula. There is a deeper one on there that looks like it might have a shimmer formulation, but the two that I got are like satiny matte type of formulations. I also picked up one of the new Give uh, satin lipsticks that came out. Um, this is Gwen Stefani's brand. So it's the high performance satin lipstick. Um, it says Anaheim shine on there and I got the shade screen my phone calls. And that is actually the lipstick that I have got on my lips today. And I've got it on with the makeup by Mario 
Dimitri lip pencil and when I used it with a more kind of pinky pencil I wasn't as crazy about the shade but I really like it more with a brown lip pencil like that Dimitri one so again this is what's on my lips and there's 0.1 ounces or three grams of product in here and then this guy here is made in the USA so this is the packaging. I was trying to get the lightest shade and it is on my skin tone more of a mid-tone pink, but again with that lip liner I think that it looks pretty. So this is the first uh, lipstick that I've tried from the range because the other shades that came out just weren't going to be ones that I wore a ton. So I'm glad I waited till she came out with these ones and these are refillable as well. So you got the kind of give around there and it comes out. The refills aren't available yet probably because at this point in time, nobody should have used up a full lipstick, maybe, right? Since this came out, but you never know. But, yeah, it's just a really pretty mid-tone pink, and it does have a bit of a fragrance to it, too, but it's, a, um, it's kind of like a cake smell. It's not super overpowering. It doesn't taste in the mouth, and once I have it on, I can't smell it, so I don't mind it. It's a, yeah, more like a donut cake kind of a scent <laughs> so let me go ahead and swatch it on my hand for you guys i may try to get the nude shade i'm not sure it looked like it might be one that was a little bit too deep but you can see on me that is definitely a mid-tone pink shade and i was kind of hoping more for a pink nude shade but that's okay because i think again it looks pretty with that lip liner so that is the anaheim shine screen my phone calls lipstick from the give range right there and then I picked up this Beauty Bakery, the Chosen Bun Eyeshadow Palette. And I've never tried anything from the Beauty Bakery line. There are nine shades that are 0.05 ounces per shade, which is quite a bit of product that you're getting. And this palette is made in China. So this is the box right here. And I saw this palette on Lauren May Beauty's channel and she kind of swayed me. She influenced me <laughs> to buy this palette because of those shimmer shades. The palette is made in China and it's that formulation in that really high foiled, super shiny formula that I think is so pretty. So this is actually the palette that I have got on my eyes today and I did have to work a little bit at blending with the mattes and I got a little bit of fallout with them but it wasn't terrible or anything like that I think that the fade out is pretty nice and then those shimmer shades which are on the lid are stunning so I am super glad that I picked this up because um, again they're really pretty and it's a one and done for me because of the lightest kind of shimmer shade that's in here um, it's got like these, I don't know, Cinnabons all over it. So there are five of those super shiny shades and then four mattes. You've got these two that are mattes and then these two shades right here. So let's go ahead and give you guys some swatches. But I adore this particular uh, formulation right here. It's so shiny and high foiled and pretty. Aren't those beautiful? So much shine. <laughs> These guys. And then this last shade right here which I'm glad there's this nice deep matte for my crease but really a pretty neutral eyeshadow palette right there and that is from uh, Beauty Bakery and it is the the chosen bun <laughs> eyeshadow palette I did want to make mention that I just noticed that the uh, lips that kind of had a little bit of that buildup on the inner rim of my lips that I kind of wiped off. Um, I just wanted to mention that. Granted, it's going on like four hours now that I've had this makeup on and I've been talking a lot, but it's really comfortable and shiny and it's pretty and it's not a deal breaker for me. But I wanted to mention that it was there and then I wiped it off. Anyway, lastly here, I did go ahead and pick up the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Nouveau Eyeshadow and Pressed Pigment Palette. So this is the box packaging right here. There is a total of 12 shades that are 0.047 ounces per shade, which I want to say is almost twice as much product as her previous palettes. I know that the weight of them or the amount per pan kind of varied between them, but 
about twice as much. There's definitely more product per pan in this palette, but it also reflects that in the price tag because it is one of the more expensive Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, palettes like this that I've seen. Um, this palette is made in the USA. I really like the updated packaging. It's not like a fuzzy or like a sticky kind of one. It's got like this uh, textured feel to it. It's, it's quite nice. And then I also like that they don't have that double-ended brush that was in all the other palettes. Not only do you get more product in here, but you don't have that brush taking up space in the palette. So um, this guy here says 12 months on there as well, and I believe um, the majority of her uh, older palettes said six months. So we all know we can use our best judgment with uh, powder products. But <laughs> anyway, here is again the packaging. And then inside you've got a mirror and then here are your 12 eyeshadows. Now this is a really pretty color story. It reminds me kind of like spring. Um, I do wish that this shade was a little bit brighter for my inner corner but when I've used this I have used it by itself and I kind of used or gravitated towards that shade for that brighter kind of pop um, for shine on the lid but I wished it was brighter. The color story in here really reminds me of an old Stila in the Garden palette. It's quite pretty like I was really drawn to the color story in here. Um, I didn't realize that the deepest shade in here was a shimmer but when I used it in the crease it blended out and it was nice and deep and it wasn't overly shiny where it kind of projected that outer hood that I have um, so I was fine with it and I have been enjoying the looks that came out of this palette. Um, the formulation is very very soft very very buttery um, when I went into this shade it did kick up quite a bit of product so similar to her older ones but some of them are pressed a little bit better than some that were super loose in the pan so hopefully you can see in the swatches here like they're just really really smooth like super soft eyeshadows And then this shade here has got a bit of like either large micas or very, very small micro glitters. It's the, I think the only one kind of like that. Um, but they adhered to my eye really well when I used it. And then these last four. So that is the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Nouveau um, eyeshadow and pressed pigment palette right there and I really like I really like what she did with this palette the exclusion of the brush uh, more product a little bit bigger pans um, kind of upgraded packaging um, I, I like it and that is everything that I have for my haul today I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful thank you for watching do not forget to wear sunscreen and I will see you guys later bye